Hello and welcome to my channel. So this is an update. All right, I put the light on. So um, this is an update on my anxiety. Um, it's been about 14 days since I've had bad news that I may possibly lose this house. Um, it's been 14 days that I have probably slept no more than two hours a night that's maximum some nights I don't think I sleep at all maybe 20 minutes five minutes eight minutes here and there um, two weeks that I've had loose stools diarrhea not as, I'm not exaggerating I don't I don't need exaggerate I don't need a lie um, waking up I normally have the air conditioner on around 80 degrees and my boyfriend will vouch to that um i've been having to put the ac on which normally would be cold for me at like 74 70, sometimes 72 because i will wake up like i'll will fall asleep for a couple minutes 20 minutes five minutes whatever and i will wake up like drenched in sweat just drenched in panic so for two weeks anxiety that pretty much doesn't let up um, and it has like in the past when my anxiety you know if it's a day or two but if it's like long pronounced like for weeks or whatever it starts affecting my bowels so it's like the anxiety is not just in my head it's in my bowels I don't know if that makes any sense to you um, I mean literally it's not but, um, it's like the anxiety causes the bowels and the bowels, remember, the anxiety, the, the brain knows, like, okay, well, the bowels are hurting. So it's, it's all, it's like feeding off of each other, so to speak. Um, it's a wonder that I'm very analytical and can talk about this. I'm surprised I'm not hallucinating because, like, I'm not sleeping. Um... In a little bit here, an hour, hour and a half, um, I'm going to start on Spravato, which is X-Ketamine. Um, you would think I'm nervous and anxiety ridden, and I am to a certain degree, but at the same time, you know, what's really sad is, is I, I have a pain doctor, and I was on hydrocodone. It's probably been now... 14, 15 years. I've been on hydrocodone for a long time. They had me on Xanax five times a day, the psychiatrist. Um, they had me on Ativan five times a day. And I was seeing a pain doctor at two hydrocodone a day, 10 milligrams. Never had a problem. Always took all my meds sparingly. I've always been that way. You know, um, you got your pill poppers, you got your normal people. It's like, here's your pill poppers, here's your normal people, here's the people that kind of scared. And then you got way over there, you can't even see it. It's way over here is me. Here's your pill poppers. I'm way over here. Like, I don't like taking meds. I always try to be strong. That's how I lost my first house because I didn't take my meds. I didn't take anti-anxiety medicine. I was like, you know, I, I can do this without it. I don't need it. I don't need to rely on pills. And my anxiety got so bad, my face got sunken in. I lost a tremendous amount of weight. And to make a long story as short as possible, I lost my home. I moved back in with my mom and dad. Then for whatever reason, I'm not gonna get into the details, my dad sold the family home I got put back in the mental hospital. Now my mother, horrible anxiety. When we moved, it took, I want to say about six years for me to get used to that house. So for basically six years, I had anxiety. Now you might think, well, if it's six years, it must not be that bad. No, it, it was bad. It was bad. I tried to commit suicide three times okay it was bad um then I moved here same thing 
horrible anxiety. It took me forever to get used to this house. And now I'm at a crossroads where I may lose this house. And what's really shitty is, is about six years ago, I know I'm jumping, it's my mind, okay? I haven't slept. Am I pissed and upset? Yeah, I'm hurt, I'm upset. I'm like, I have every right to be upset. With the whole medical field, you know? I'm not getting the proper medical treatment. So, um, is it hard for me to talk about this? No, not really. Because I've always been an open book. I've always been open and blunt, blunt with people. My doctor's everything. So why, why, why change it on YouTube? Um, so, um, uh, about six years ago, my pain doctor is like, well, we can't give you your pain medicine, your hydrocodone, if you're on benzodiazepines. Benzodiazepine is like Ativan, Xanax, Clonazepam, Klonopin, stuff that I was on five times a day to calm me down so that I could function, so that I'm not pooping my guts out. I can't tell you how many times I poop a day for two weeks, and it looks like snake skin because in, in my gastro, your the gastrologist for this, the poop doctor, the stomach doctor, told me years ago, he told me, he was like, your colon is spasming from your anxiety and the lining, it's just shedding out. Or the mucus, it's the mucus. That's pretty much like everything goes right through me. I, I eat every day, but I just eat with my medicine. I don't have no appetite for almost, well, no, actually, no, it's been longer than two weeks, almost three weeks. But a good two weeks, because I already stopped, stopped eating appetite already, but two weeks ago when anxiety started, like, I don't have any appetite. I have to force myself to eat, okay? So, uh, back to what I was saying is the, the um, and forgive me that I'm not, if I sound like that, but I have not slept. About six years ago, he was like, we're not going to give you these, these benzodiazepines anymore. I'm sorry, we're not going to give you the pain pills anymore, sorry, if you're going to continue with benzodiazepines. So I just never went back to the psychiatrist. I had a quick cold turkey. Was it hard for me? It would have been harder if I would have popped pills all the time, but I didn't. I only took Xanax and Ativan and those types of benzodiazepines when needed. Okay, because again, I'm extremely extremely conservative with medicine so much that I lost my home you know this this is a major thing so um so anyway my primary doctor is more than willing to give me something out of Xanax something not to pop pump bunch of pills and get addicted to drugs no just to get me through this until i found out whether or not i'm gonna lose my house because i have an appointment on the 31st I'm, I'm trying to upload this video today by the way um i'm scared shitless okay with this appointment that i have i wrote my psychiatrist and said, look, my pain doctor won't let me take benzodiazepines, Xanax, Ativan, stuff like that. Would you please write my doctor for a short period of time? Hell, I'll get off the hydrocodone. It's going to be hell because I've been on it for like over, way over 10 years. Okay. So whether or not the fact is I'm addicted to it. If I give you two hydrocodone a day, you're going to be addicted to it. You're going to have withdrawal symptoms. That That's just the fact. Regardless if you're a drug addict or not, it does not matter. If you're taking hydrocodone for over 10 years, you're going to have withdrawal symptoms. That alone is going to make me have anxiety. But I'm willing to do that for a week or two just so that I can calm down enough, get some fucking sleep. So, um, so I write my psychiatrist. Well, she's not like the head psychiatrist. She's like under the psychiatrist. She's like a nurse practitioner, I guess. She doesn't write me back. The main one does and says, oh, uh, it's dangerous to be on both. We can't do that. Period. You know, they're treating me like a number and not like an individual. Look at the back record. See that I'm conservative. I'll get up the hydrocodone. I'll give you my bottle of hydrocodone then you know I can't take it. 
This is I'm not getting the proper medical treatment, and I'm seeking and help, and, and it, I, I get no help. I'm yeah, I'm gonna get this bravado treatment in about an hour or two from now, and I'll let you know how that goes. Um, that's x ketamine, which is like a form, or basically it is ketamine. Um, I don't think it really helps with anxiety, though. It mostly helps with depression. Um, and I've said it before. If God came down right now and said, you know, I'm only going to take one thing away from you. I have degenerative disc in my neck and my back. I'm in pain every day. I can't take Advil because I've already abused it. A drug that doesn't get you high. Why'd you abuse Advil then? Because I'm in fucking pain. So now I have an ulcer, at least they think I do, because every time I try Advil or naproxen, my stomach hurts really bad, right? Right here. And I mean bad. Tom only does so much. But what I'm saying is, I have degenerative disc. I have anxiety. I have OCD and depression. Those are my main things. And then, of course, I have IBS, but that's that comes with anxiety. I would gladly accept my depression for the rest of my life. Gladly. If the anxiety would just be taken from me. Because with a depression, it's just there. You know, it's like I'm kind of like used to it. It's just, that's just life. I sleep when I'm depressed. Anxiety, there's no escape. You can't sleep. At least I can't. So yeah, it would be nice if they just took my anxiety away. With medicine that would help me. At least until I get over this and find out whether or not I'm going to lose this house or not. Um, it's sad. It's ridiculous. You know, I am suffering. I've been suffering for two weeks. I already lost a house. I may lose another house. The other day I was at my primary doctor and I flipped out. And she in a roundabout way said that, you know, she could, in other words, put me in, in the hospital, like the mental hospital. And then, of course, they would give me some Ativan or something to calm me down. And then my pain doctor would be like, well, I can't say nothing about that. And I told her, I was like, I can't do it. I can't afford to go in the hospital. I was like, I got the things I got to do. I, I got I, I to be there on the 31st. I got to find out whether I'm going to lose this house. There's other things going on, too. My taxes are through the roof. I don't even know if I can afford to keep this house. So, yeah. Um, it's really, it's ridiculous and it's sad that, and the crazy thing is, is like, I went to the Philippines with my boyfriend and, uh, horrible anxiety. I almost canceled. My primary doctor's like, don't do that. I'll just give you a few. I think she, I think she gave me out of Anna's annex. I don't even remember. I think she gave me like five. And I was worried, like, oh my God, I'm going to get in trouble. My pain doctor is going to find out. Oh, they found out. They got on to me. I'm like, here's the five in the bottle. I haven't taken it yet. You can take it from me. Okay? Like, I haven't even taken it yet. I'm saving it for my flight. If I was a pill seeker, don't you think I would have already taken one? That was like two weeks later. I was like, this is for when I need it on this flight. So I don't spaz out and wind up in some mental hospital in China. Because I got to go through China to get to the Philippines. And the crazy thing is, he's like, don't worry about it. You can take it. I thought you said that I can't be on benzodiazepines like Ativan and Xanax if I'm on hydrocodone. Now, all of a sudden, you think it's okay? I don't, I don't get that. I have been to every... My mouth is so dry. I have been on... I've been to every pharmacist, Target, Walgreens, HEB. I've asked the pharmacist. They flat out tell me, we have patients that are on both. They're on hydrocodone and they're also taking Advan or Xanax on the other. I'm like, so it's not the law? They're like, no, it's not the law. I've said it before on this channel. If I wrote a fucking book, people would not believe People don't believe it. I'm the most conservative person when it comes to money, medicine, pills, whatever. Fill in the blank. Um, 
and it it really hasn't gotten me anywhere you know I've made sacrifices like you wouldn't if people only knew my last therapist knew I told her the things that I do and she was like that is I mean she literally truly deeply felt sorry for me um I think my boyfriend knows it's kind of how can you live with me for six years and not know maybe the doctors need to watch this video but are they gonna are they gonna give the time of course not so I'm gonna go the ride's gonna pick me up in the esketamine spervado treatment I'll try to record the treatment. I don't think they're going to let me record it, but I'll, I'll, I'll let y'all know how that goes. I still want to just let go and just enjoy life and say, just fuck it. Just fuck it. Just be happy and I have anxiety. I'm almost 50 years old. I'm 48. You don't think I've tried that? That's another thing that upsets me. People say, oh, well, have you tried praying to Jesus? Have you tried God? Have you tried this? Have you tried that? The only thing that fucking helps me when I have anxiety is a benzodiazepine to calm me down. I started Buse Bar about four, three or four days ago. It's not calming my anxiety down. If anything, it's making it worse. Um, it increases dopamine. I'm like, why would I need more dopamine? My mind is already racing. And if anything, it's making my, my sleep disturbance worse. I've been on um, Zoloft for probably on almost three weeks now. The only thing is I can't get an erection. And the weird thing is, is like, I love sweets. Like I'll put sugar on everything. And I try to force myself to eat a piece of watermelon. With no sugar on it. Normally I put sugar on it. It was like extremely sweet to me. I'm like, oh, like how is it so sweet? I was like, maybe I got a sweet watermelon. So the kind bars, those those vegan kind bars, I got three of them at the store the other day. Every single one was overly sweet. So it's doing something to me. Um but then again I don't have no appetite like at all. I just, I've said it before on this channel, I just wish God or someone would just Maybe I guess there's certain things I should not share Be lucky that you're watching this video because probably in a month from now I'm probably going to delete it all these anxiety videos, I'll probably delete them and just have my food videos up. 